The bells are ringing. It's time for Andrew Kramer to show up. Where is where is Andrew Kramer? Where is Andrew Kramer? Today is April 28th and two days ago I woke up early in the morning and I checked my Twitter and I saw this inconspicuous thumbnail create impressive VFX in unexpected ways and I clicked on it and Hello everyone and welcome. Uh, my name is Andrew Kramer and uh, you know, let's start this presentation, okay? Thank you. Wow. That was quite a touching moment for me. The world, at least the After Effects community, has been waiting ever since for Andrew Kramer to come back. And how he came back, with super new tips and tricks in his latest presentation at NAB 2022 Adobe booth. Normally, and you know me, it takes me forever to make video tutorials, but this is something I'm eager to share with you. I put this video in record time, even by my standards. What I really love about Andrew Kramer is that, except of his very own plugins, which he rarely uses in his tutorials, he just uses native effects. This video isn't just a simple recap of his presentation. It would have been too easy to show you the clips and just react to them. You can watch the presentation for yourself. I put the link in the description below. No, I took the time one day to try out my favorite top three of his techniques on my own footage from scratch. In his presentation, Andrew made his methods look very easy to accomplish. But when I tried to recreate what he was doing, I encountered hidden obstacles. To his excuse, he only scratched the surface as he didn't have much time to get deeper into his tricks. But that's why I made this video, to show you in a quick step-by-step -step way what he might have done in detail. Because I just took one day to figure them out, my visual results aren't as quite as elaborate as Andrew's examples, but I think my video is a good addition to his great presentation. In my favorite technique number three, Andrew let a text disperse like sand, but with an effect you wouldn't expect. Surprise number one, he uses CC balls instead of a particle system. And if it's not a surprise for you, here is surprise number two. He doesn't use the scatter parameter. So I set up the ball size and grid spacing to get a finer division. And this is what it looks like when you dial up the twist angle, which doesn't look like a sand dispersion, not even remotely. So I created a new white solid, then another but black one with a linear wipe applied to. I animated a linear transition with a slight angle and a feathered edge and with a turbulent displace effect. And I used this layer to reveal an additional black solid with a turbulent noise effect. Because I wanted the animation to end with a full black screen, I duplicated the linear wipe solid and shifted it in the timeline. Then I pre-composed these solids as my animated texture. On the text layer, I applied a set channels effect to composite the animated texture onto the text. And here is Andrew's genius trick. He set the twist property to the red channel to let the twist be driven by the layered texture. But this reminds of twisting and not falling sand. So presumably he changed the position of the text and created a camera with a large focal length. And finally, he suppressed the green channel with a channel mixer and tinted the text. I didn't do it here, but you can reposition the text back to the sander with an adjustment layer and a transform effect. In my favorite technique number two, Andrew created a fake 3D cross-section object just with drone footage. This is a free drone footage from Pexels.com. I rotor brushed it, which took forever, and still didn't look clean because of time pressure. Then I camera tracked the footage and looked for the right track points to create a 3D solid that I masked with a circle. I used it as a traveling mat for the drone footage, reposition, and rescaled it. Then I looked for a nice stone texture, imported it, fitted it to the composition size, pre-composed it, and applied a CC cylinder effect to it. Then I positioned and rotated the cylinder by eye, which was very fiddly, to find out that it didn't match the camera. So I copied the position values of the solid layer and pasted them into CC cylinder, which was a big help. 
but still missed it because of different coordinate systems, but with a little tweaking it finally matched rock solid. Because the stone texture looked distorted, I opened the texture composition, scaled down the X value and applied a CC rapid tile effect with tiling set to unfold to create a seamless texture. I wanted to create something similar with this ocean footage. Instead of roto brushing it, I keyed out the blue water and sky. I camera tracked the footage, but because of this, I couldn't create a proper solid for a cylinder cap. And that's why I applied Andrew's next tip. Let's call it my favorite technique number 2.5. He used a power pin effect to unstretch the perspective of a photo to get a flat top view, which allowed him to add 2D effects. And when he reversed it, the 2D effects matched the 3D view. In my case, I tracked the footage in Mocha AE, expanded the blue planar surface to the entire frame and added the CC power pin effect to stabilize the footage. I achieved this by checking invert in Mocha AE and connecting the corner positions of CC power pin to the tracked corner positions of Mocha AE. This way I could create the cylinder without bothering about the camera movement. Then I copied Mocha AE and CC power pin, precomposed everything and pasted the effect to the precomposition. And now here comes the magic. Like Andrew, I clicked on unstretch to get the camera movement back. And this also applied to the cylinder. And after some cleaning up and some other things I unnecessarily spent a lot of time with, I ended up with this. Somehow I was lost at the beach. In my favorite technique number one, Andrew found a genius trick to add additional movement to an already motion tracked scene. And this is by far my most favorite technique. This is me running towards a little French town in Aix-en-Provence. I track the footage and put a text onto the street. Let's say you want the camera to tilt up to see a bird, balloon or whatsoever that would exist in the same 3D space. The problem is, when you turn the footage into a 3D layer, it behaves erratically and doesn't match the tracked camera. So we need to sync the 3D footage layer to the tracked camera. And we can do this by parenting the 3D layer to the tracked camera at frame zero. And as you can see in the custom view, the 3D layer is locked to the field of view. To add the tilt animation to the existing camera movement, you duplicate the tracked camera that will act like an independent cam. Delete the keyframes when your playhead is at frame zero, otherwise you have to reset the transforms to match the original camera. Then you parent the duplicated camera to the original cam. And now you are able to animate it independently from the tracked camera, like tilting it up. And you can even change the field of view, what I did to conceal the black background on the left and right. To fill the gap above, I used a CC reptile effect and set it to unfold to extend the sky. And because the 3D text is behind the 3D layer in Zspace, we can't see it. So I duplicated the cameras and precomposed them together with a text. I inserted another object in the 3D space to let the camera have something to point to. And here you can see the final scene with additional camera movement, preserving the original track and both 3D layers still match with the scene's movement rock solidly. I know this was maybe a bit too fast paced but I hope you got the idea. Anyways, these were really cool tips from Andrew Kramer and I sincerely hope that we don't have to wait another two or three years to get more from him. Especially that camera thing, that already inspired me to make a related tutorial, let me think about it. See you next time.